and welcome to the British Interplanetary Society. Now, some of you may not have heard of us before, so I'm here to give you a brief explanation about who we are and something of our history. The British Interplanetary Society, or BIS, is the oldest space advocacy society in the world still in existence today. It was started by Philip Cleeter on 13th of October 1933 in Liverpool. At that time, Cleeter wrote, the ultimate aim of the society is the conquest of space and thence interplanetary travel. He then went on to say, the immediate task is the stimulation of public interest in the subject of interplanetary travel and the dissemination of knowledge concerning the true nature of the difficulties which at present hinder its achievement. And that is basically what we still do to this day. Then in 1937, at the behest of some of the members, the BIS moved from Liverpool to London. Many people who later became very influential in astronautics joined the Society at this time, including the renowned science fiction author Arthur C. Clarke, as well as Val Cleaver, who developed rocket engines. Over many years, the BIS has created a number of important technical projects, holding true to our motto, From Imagination to Reality. As far back as 1937, John D. Stewart, who joined the BIS in that year, had already begun working on designing and building a multi-stage launch vehicle, and on 31st of December successfully launched probably the world's first three-stage test rocket, the RR-47. The BIS was looking at going to the moon even before the outbreak of World War II. In 1938, the BIS Technical Committee produced a conceptual design of a vessel named the BIS Lunar Spaceship, which could carry a crew of three safely to the moon, to land and stay for 14 days, and provide a safe return to the Earth. Although the design was a long way from what eventually became Project Apollo, the BIS Lunar Spaceship is regarded as one of the classical pioneering studies in the history of astronautics. In fact, the BIS was acknowledged as having helped with the design of the Apollo Lunar Module during the 1960s. After the end of the Second World War in 1945, the BIS resumed its activities, and in 1946, the BIS Mega Rock rocket proposal was put forward by R.A. Smith after Harry Ross observed that the V-2 was nearly big enough to carry a man. In fact, the Ross and Smith Mega Rock was a modified, enlarged and strengthened V-2 missile. The objective was to fly an astronaut to a maximum of 304 kilometers where scientific observations of the Earth and the Sun could be made, radio communications tested through the ionosphere, and data could be collected on human performance over a wide range of gravity conditions. The project was submitted to the Ministry of Supply on 23rd of December 1946, but was rejected. However, the proposal has remarkable similarities to the subsequent American Mercury Redstone project. R. A. Smith developed the concept of a moon landing in an article, Landing on an Airless World, published in the August 1947 BIS journal. In this, he accurately depicted the procedure that was to be adopted for the Apollo Lunar Excursion Module. The only notable difference between the two cases was, perhaps, that Smith's design was more elegant than the actual lunar module. Smith also drew designs of what bases on the moon might look like in the future, and Arthur C. Clarke used many of these in his science fiction stories in the 1950s. In 1948, the BIS space station was proposed by Harry Ross and Ralph Smith in a paper entitled Orbital Bases, published in the BIS journal. This was based upon the original idea called The Living Wheel by Hermann Nordung in 1928. This was a permanent astronaut staff of 24 people placed in an Earth orbital space station. Looking at it now, the BIS space station may seem quite primitive when compared to the technology of the International Space Station today, but for its time it was a visionary concept and obviously a lot of thought had gone into the engineering and design for basic human requirements. Moving further forward, at a symposium in November 1949, 
Harry Ross presented a paper on the lunar spacesuit, again illustrated by Ralph Smith. This was probably the very first significant design of a spacesuit for lunar exploration missions. The spacesuits that were eventually worn by the Apollo astronauts are a far cry from this original 1940s design, but the work started out by Ross led to credible thinking on how humans could survive in a self-contained mobile habitat. And if you visit the UK National Space Centre in Leicester, you will see a full-scale accurate construction of the BIS lunar spacesuit built by Stephen Wisdom using the original methods of construction which would have been used in the day. So this suit is in fact an exact rendition of how the suit would have been. In the 1950s, the BIS played a leading role in creating the International Astronautical Federation, where scientists from the field of space research gathered in an attempt to ensure a constant dialogue between the space nations, regardless of political turmoil. The IAF Annual Congress, better known as the IAC, is regarded as one of the world's major annual events in the space industry calendar. The founding member nations of the IAF signed its constitution on 4th of September 1951 during the second IAC in London, hosted by the BIS. Since then, our society has hosted a further three. Another important technical project of the BIS was Project Daedalus, first formulated in the 1970s. This was a robotic probe designed to fly to Barnard's star six light years away, or other star systems of similar distances, thought at the time to have planets. The final design was published in a special supplement of the BIS journal in 1978, and from this a subsequent study was born named Project Icarus, which is still ongoing today. The BIS holds many of its own important international conferences and symposia, including Reinventing Space, which brings together many leaders of the space industry, agencies, government representatives and academia from all over the world. The BIS publishes its own regular journals. The Journal of the BIS, or JBIS, began in 1934 and continues to this day to be a forum for the publication of important technical papers on a wide range of astronautical topics. Our monthly magazine, Spaceflight, was created and first edited by the famous British astronomer Sir Patrick Moore in 1956, a year before the launch of Sputnik, and continues to be at the forefront of space exploration, informing both professionals and enthusiasts alike on current international space activities, as well as future space projects. And our Space Chronicle magazine provides the rich heritage of all the important historical developments in the field of space technology and exploration. The excellent reference library we have at our London headquarters has grown into one of the best astronautical libraries anywhere in the world. We also have a very extensive video library available to our members on YouTube covering all the lectures and conferences we have recorded, ranging over many topics within the space field. Spacecraft design and engineering, space medicine, cosmology, astrobiology, exoplanets and space colonies, to name but a few. The BIS has undoubtedly a very prestigious history. However, the Society focuses on the future as well as the present, as it has always done. To that end, we are very much involved with STEM outreach initiatives, which help to encourage and educate the next generation of engineers, scientists and non-professional enthusiasts. We actively participate in many public outreach events, both in the UK and abroad, working closely with the European Space Agency and their Open Days for Schools programme. And we are very proud to support the UK SEDS organisation, the Students for the Exploration and Development of Space, as well as many other educational institutions. In addition to these, the BIS runs the UK section of World Space Week, encouraging schools, clubs and families to get involved and enjoy running their own space-themed events, from the 4th to the 10th of October each year. 
The BIS holds many regular events and lectures, both here in the UK and abroad, enjoying the patronage of many leaders in the space field. So please do visit our website, that's bis-space.com, and see all the great things we have to offer and how you can get involved. Come with us and join the adventure.